Hi everyone, and happy Tink Day! Welcome to my YouTube video! I think I mentioned doing a, a video like this on Tumblr, um, but basically, I'm really proud of and happy with the wonderful dialogue editor that my uh, friend and collaborator, Jade Tigers Typing, made for me. I also wanted to talk a bit about my philosophies with dialogue and the kind of problems I'm trying to solve for. So in this little video, I'll be talking about that and showing you how I make dialogue using the new system. So, as a point of reference, in the demo, dialogue was all in one script, in one switch event. Which, for those of you who don't know, you're essentially just making uh, something that you put an input in, and you write inside, like, okay, if the input's this, do this. So you're assigning, for me, I was assigning different conversations and interactions to specific numbers that I would put in. The main reason I wound up having to kind of drop this system is just the sheer amount of dialogue in Tink. It was already a lot by the end of the demo, but I was also looking at building out the amount of dialogue available to the player, and uh, the more I added, the worse it was getting or the worse it would get. So one thing I've really wanted to improve since I released the demo is developing uh, a expected entry point with conversation depth. In the demo, there were a lot of conversations that were just kind of funny, quote unquote, non sequiturs, or, uh, you know, little pieces of world building. And then every once in a while, you just talk to a guy and he dump like a whole Wikipedia article on you. And I like uh, having these kind of oppressive conversations from time to time. I think it's more naturalistic that some people will have more to say, uh, but I do think it kind of created this circumstance where uh, if someone is like double checking conversations to make sure there isn't any advancement available, they are finding themselves uh, forgetting that this uh, otherwise unimportant NPC has this really, really long thing to say and now they're sitting through it and skipping it. So basically in the new system, I wound up designing something uh, that lets you pull on conversational threads uh, with nested questions, a lot like you'd see in a game uh, where the choices really matter. Uh, and I think that makes sense because in those games, even pushing on certain topics can feel like a role-playing choice. And I like that about those games a lot. And often I don't push on certain things. So I wanted to kind of let players feel like that amount of engaging is voluntary so that when I want to force them into a really long conversation, um, it's not rote. It's not something they're used to and maybe they'll pay attention. They they probably won't, but that's okay. <laughs> I don't pay attention to a lot of games either. So this is the dialogue editor. It was made in Java, and the way we went about making this uh, was mostly... Uh, I was designing the system in Game Maker at the same time that she was developing the Java application. So I did a ton of documentation. I wrote down how I wanted things to work. Um, I standardized the text box size um, for consistency's sake, and uh, I just sent her all that info. Uh, we did a couple rounds of kind of stress testing it. It broke a few times, um, but you know she really had it meet my needs. I'm just going to go through the process of making a new dialogue. So the first thing that I would do is add a new conversation, give it a title. And I'm actually going to name it based on the room that the conversation is in. And I tend to do this with every conversation that only happens once in one place, simply because um, I tend to need to see all of those in the same spot. And it can also f sort alphabetically. And so sorting by room kind of groups them in that way. So I add the room name. And then I add the separator, uh, which is just an exclamation point. Um, then I can name it whatever I want. So I guess for this one, we're just going to call it uh, Mr. Demo. And I'm also going to make a new character for this one. So let's use Wrenchman. So we'll have Wrenchman say something. And now let's have Tink reply, because Tink loves to reply. 
And uh, in that reply, obviously Tink is using a hashtag. And to make it gray, we just select it and click on the matching color block and assign it that color. And what's happening internally is that we have these bracketed out text codes that look a lot like HTML. And essentially, they just tell it what color to be, what behavior to have, etc. So now we're dropping Wrenchman's assets into GameMaker. The object that he'll be is a child of the general entity parent object that most NPCs share. And under his asset variables, we're going to supply the dialogue name that he uses. Uh, but thanks to this checkbox, we don't have to use the room name part of it. So that saves me a lot of headache as well when I'm fooling around in GameMaker. So now we drop him into the world and let's see how this turned out. To top this video off, I also want to show how I approach doing the nested uh, choices. What I end up doing is I create a conversation that serves as the main route, and I use these special kind of pages called branch pages that determine where the dialogue will go. For example, here, um, I'm setting up this one so that if the requirements are met, the first dialogue has been seen, then we show the second dialogue. And this is exactly how you would get the very typical thing where an NPC says one bark once and then you approach them the second time and then they say a shorter, simpler bark or they remind you of what they said before. This is something I do a lot in Tink, but this is also how I would set up choices. Here is me setting up a choice page, which is structured basically the same as your average dialogue page, but I can add as many responses as I want. So I have these symbols to the side that are meant to communicate what kind of action it is. I have a speech bubble here, so you know it's something Tink is saying. If I have a conversation where there's a choice that's like, I have some questions for you, then that can go to a different dialogue that just has a choice page uh, with a bunch of questions that just branch out into different sub dialogues. Obviously, we could go on honing this thing forever, make it so clean to use, make it the crispest UI. But I'm at a point where I'm really happy with it, and I think it's going to meet all my needs for this foreseeable future, besides um, some custom font stuff later on. So let me know what you think. I know that wasn't a in-depth tutorial, it was a lot of editing. But I wanted to show generally my workflow. If you thought this was kind of a cool thing to see, or you have any questions about this, you can leave a comment on the YouTube video. Yeah, hit me up and uh, stay safe.